everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn and Way of Spears and today I'm going to be talking to you about filtering. What is it, what are some examples of it, and how do you avoid it in your manuscript? Let's just get started. So for the longest time, I had no idea that filtering was even a thing. I think I first found out that it was a thing to look out for while I was reading through some like freelance editors pages and they were talking about what they really focused on finding within a manuscript that they were working with and a lot of them mentioned filtering and I had no idea what they were talking about. So I avoided it for a while because I was like, you know, I don't want to add another thing into my brain that I have to focus on while I'm writing a draft. But now I am on the third draft of my novel, Song of the Dryad, and my beta readers have graciously pointed out to me that I have been filtering a lot in my novel. So what even is filtering? The way I understand it, and I'm going to give you my descriptions. If you want to go look up a Google definition, go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to explain it to you in the way that I understand, in the way that I um, interact with it. So to me, filtering means that I am kind of putting up a veil between the action in the character and the reader. So the reader isn't really experiencing the action with the character so much as hearing about it afterwards or just being told about it. So in a way it can also have a, you know, telling versus showing type characteristic to it. So an example might be, um, if I was filtering, I might say, Charlotte felt, Charlotte is the main character in my novel, by the way, um, and she hikes through the forest a lot. <laughs> so I might say something like, Charlotte felt the, you know, the wind on her cheeks. So that would be an example of filtering because I'm saying Charlotte felt X, you know, she felt this thing rather than saying, you know, Charlotte lifted her head and the breeze played through her hair. Now that is really throwing you directly into the action. You're experiencing the lifting of the head, you're experiencing the wind blowing through her hair, and it's really more immersive than just saying, Charlotte felt the wind on her face. You know, that is really taking the reader and pushing them away. You know, you get to observe this action rather than experiencing it alongside the character. So that's, you know, that's kind of my understanding of it. Now, as I've been going through my manuscript, um, like I said, I have had betas pointing it out to me, but now I have a sharp enough eye to catch it on my own, even when my betas have missed it. So I do it a lot. Um, Charlotte felt this, Charlotte heard that, Charlotte saw this. So it's like, I, I was using my senses, you know, I was using the five senses, but I was using them in a way that removed the reader from the action of the novel rather than immersing them in it. And really what I'm going for here with my novel is a fully immersive experience. I really want readers to feel like they are right there alongside of my character, walking hand in hand with her, experiencing what's going on in the novel, rather than feeling like they're hovering at a distance watching. And filtering can absolutely make readers feel like they're being held at a distance. So again, I picture it like a veil. Instead of the reader being right there, there's a little veil between them and the action that they're having to kind of peer through, and that's what filtering means to me. Um, again, this was something that I didn't know much about even, you know, two months ago. So when I was writing the first draft, I had no idea what filtering was. When I finished the second draft, I still had no idea what filtering was, but I see it now and I am so grateful that my betas pointed it out to me because now that I am editing all of the filtering out of my novel, I feel like the, the action is so much more powerful because you're actually there with Charlotte and experiencing that the, these things that she's experiencing rather than being told about them. Uh, so again, like I said before, this to me is kind of an example of me telling the reader that something's happening rather than showing the reader what's happening. And I try to go for showing the reader what's happening as often as possible. Now, it's, it's not like 
you can never filter in your novel. There are absolutely some times where I go to fix a segment of filtering and I might try to move words around a little bit and, you know, restructure sentences so that I'm not filtering. But in some instances, filtering really works the best within some contexts. So the way I like to write is to be aware of the rules so that I can break them when I want to. Now, you know, there are a lot of grammatical rules and structural rules and you're supposed to write like this type of rules. But again, your writing is your writing. It's your creative pursuit. So don't feel too stressed out if you watch this and you're like, oh my God, I had no idea what filtering was. Maybe my whole novel is filtering. Don't worry about it. Just have fun, finish that first draft and then go back and start looking for these things. Like I said, I did not even know what filtering was until I started working on my third draft, which is incorporating beta feedback. So this is something that I just learned about recently and I've been writing for a while and I didn't even know what it was. So don't feel like you have to know everything. Don't feel like you have to incorporate everything or know all the rules in order to write because that is not the case at all. Moving forward, um, I am sure that when I write, you know, new content, I'm still going to have filtering in there. But I also know that when I go back through and I'm ready to edit and clean things up, that I have a keen enough eye to catch that filtering now and rework it as often as possible to make the action a lot more immersive for readers. Now, like I said, this was Natalia Lee's description of filtering. So if you have more questions or want to look into it some more, I highly recommend that you, you know, do a Google search. I believe editor Ellen Brock has a great video about filtering. I will link it down below because I think she was one of my first introductions to it because I saw one of her videos that mentioned filtering and I was like, uh-uh, nope, nope, I am staying away from that because I don't need to know a new rule that I'm breaking. But now that my draft is complete and I'm working on the third draft, I was ready to know what I was doing wrong so that I could fix it in the way that I think sounds best. But I do highly recommend that you do your research. I certainly did. After my betas told me I was filtering, I went and I looked, you know, I looked it up. I tried to figure out what it meant. I tried to figure out how to fix it. And now I feel like I have a pretty good handle on it. So. Just remember, write your first draft in whatever way you want. Just get the words on the paper and then worry about your filtering and your showing versus telling and your point of view shifts and all of that when you are in the editing stages. Because I think if you worry about all of this stuff too early on, it's going to scare you away from your project. So just relax, enjoy the process and work on this kind of stuff once you're in editing phases. All right, everybody. So I hope this gave you a little bit more info about filtering. I've definitely had questions about it. If you have questions for me, please feel free to leave them below. Um, I will do the best I can to answer your questions. And if I feel like I am not the right person to answer your question, then I will try to point you in the direction of somebody that's going to be able to help you out. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to see you in my next one. Bye.